We have some having some technical difficulties, but uh, we're back now with Francois. So, Francois, l while we get the video teed up, um, can you just go a little bit more into uh, the concept behind FXC and what your what your goal is and vision for for the offering? Right. the The video is is running, so I don't want to interfere it, it's with okay. the video. We'll, but we'll work on the sound here for a second. Oh. Okay. Um, the concept behind the, um, the, the design and the engineering of the motorcycle is the following. Uh, we believe that in a mature market like the motorcycle market, we really need to come with novel ideas and concept and, and really have something to say to the market to exist. Um, this is why we're not going into this market trying to clone or to do a replica of anything existing, but come with our own um, technical solution for um, for the key technical elements of the motorcycle. In other words, and without trying to be too, too technical, <clears throat> we have designed a frameless motorcycle where the stress member is actually the engine. We have a, a complete integration at the power plant level between the engine, the transmission, the starter, the uh, swing arm, the rear suspension, and the exhaust system. We have designed also a motorcycle that does not have any single wire or hydraulics or any uh, thing um, external. Everything is actually drilled through the parts, so it's internal, <laughs> sorry, to the motorcycle. And um, and last but not least, um, it is a very contemporary design that um, without being too modern, try to make a visual difference to anything that is currently existing. So that's on the on the design and engineering side. On the business side, or or, or on the more economical side, um, what we've tried to do is to have a design and a supply chain that would allow us to offer the motorcycle at a price that is comparable to the premium model cycle from other brands. We are strong believers that uh, the model cycle should be visually and technically stunning, but come at a price that is absolutely comparable to the high-end models from other brands. So this is why we're targeting a $30,000 um, price point, and if we can even go lower, we'll try to go lower to make the model cycle accessible to the largest number. Um, in terms of distribution, uh, we've decided to go with uh, motorcycle dealers. You, we have to, to take into account here that a motorcycle dealer um, is not like a car dealer. It's more a friendly place where people enjoy coming, uh, seeing the novelty, uh, talking to peers, and, and also it's an important point of attachment for anyone who's um, – who, who's, who's actually engaging into motorcycle and buying a new model um, is, is actually um, also want to have a, a someone to refer to in case of any issue, in case of any question. So the, for us, it, it, it seems that, like an evidence that we should, be, um, we should be going through dealers. Now, the trick is which dealers? And the, the first thing is we don't need a, a vast number of dealers. Uh, even in the U.S., we're thinking about three to 50 dealers to cover the entire continental U.S., um, knowing that there's more than 2,000 dealers in the U.S. And the second thing is we're an American brand made in New York, and uh, two-thirds of the market is looking for American products. Yet a lot of the multi-brand dealers – and multi-brand meaning carrying several brands do not have any American brand. So we're natural for multi-brand motorcycle dealer who carry European and Japanese brands to actually have a chance to carry an American brand and, get, and catch the eye of the American clientele who usually don't pay attention to multi-brand dealer with no American motorcycles. So that's, that's our strength, not only is the product, but also the positioning of the product, not only this price, but also its brand image um, being very attractive in, in, in the U.S. for non-American motorcycle dealers. Great. Now, if we go... Yeah. No, I was going to say, let's, um, I think we have the video teed up, so let's go ahead and, and get that started, and then we'll, okay. come, we'll come back to where we left off. Hold on. 
All right, thank you. Well, we've known each other for nearly 10 years now. I was an investor in a motorcycle company and Ed was the head of design there. We are both really passionate about motorcycles and the motorcycle industry. So after a long conversation and research, we decided to create a new company together, FXC Industries. And here at FXC, we're designing, engineering, and manufacturing straight from Brooklyn in New York City. We're creating New York's first premium motorcycle brand with fresh take on design, manufacturing, sales, and marketing. My name is Edward Jacobs. I've been a motorcycle designer for over 10 years now. I've been designing and engineering motorcycles that are currently on the road, as well as developing concept motorcycles for major motorcycle brands. My name is Francois Turney. My career started with five years at Bain & Company, and ever since, I've been an entrepreneur, founding, growing, and eventually selling companies. I spent the majority of my career in industrial sourcing and cost optimization. When we decided to start our own motorcycle brand, we came to the idea that the key was to bring a fresh design at an affordable price. In other words, have something to say to the market, not replicate any existing design or form. I could see very well how our ideas would fit in the motorcycle market. We think that there is actually a gap in this motorcycle market, namely the premium segment. We're targeting a $30,000 retail price. We created FX Industries in mid-2013 and started developing our concept, raising the initial capital to develop our prototypes and validate all our ideas. One major differentiating feature of our company is that we combine design and engineering simultaneously. We design ready-to-manufacture parts and components directly within our CAD software environment. My take on designing these motorcycles is to create our own language, staying away from the ideas of heritage and nostalgia or the pure performance cues. My design is based on a utilitarian approach where each part, each component is here for a reason and has a true purpose. Wish I could show you everything right now, but we can until we're ready to launch the full brand. We're not creating one, but three motorcycles. So we cover from the start all major riding positions, cruiser position, roadster position, and racing position. This is possible because of our modular design that shares a common engine and transmission platform. Innovation is an important part of what we're creating. Not innovation in the sense of a revolution, but more in the sense of integrating design with technology in ways never approached before, and making sure we're basing our innovations on proven technologies. FXC Industries is located in New York City in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. We have the advantage of being a design and engineering studio, yet located within an industrial area, which allows us to do full-fledged manufacturing right on site. One new tenant is FXE Industries, which is creating the next great motorcycle. Thank you very much, Ed, for what you're creating. We have full prototyping capabilities in-house and are currently building our prototypes. We're looking at going into production by late 2016. We have shown our design and engineering to a large number of potential customers, but also to the major vendors that we wanted to have on board for this project. And I have to say that I was really happy about their response. They were enthusiastic. We've since signed OEM contract with companies like Bosch, Pirelli, Brembo, and they've understood that we are a true manufacturer. We're here to create an iconic brand that will be the best expression of the premium segment. We want to focus exclusively on this market segment and become the manufacturer of reference for premium motorcycles. So that was a great introduction to the concept behind FXC. Uh, Francois, what, what did you want to bring to our audience uh, following that? I, I, I think I wanted to, um, to show that um, in the EB5 world, there's not only a real estate project, but there's more industrial project and they can be very valid. Um, I invite any potential investor and all EB5 professional uh, to visit us in Brooklyn and to 
see by themselves the progress the team is doing and the great response we're getting from suppliers, from dealers, and from now uh, customers, pre-order customers um, to see how solid and how valid our project is and, um, and, and how it can be a great qualification for uh, investors uh, looking for an, MB, an EB-5 investment and possibly in an area that is um, a little different than those that are um, uh, very common in, in this industry. Also, as, as a last point, I wanted to stress um, the fact that we try to make a very attractive offer to uh, investors. We uh, do realize that <clears throat> and they, it's a leap of faith for some of them to go in with an industrial company uh, in an early stage, and um, we're we're offering um, a three percent annual return on the investment as well as a free model cycle after five years when the uh, initial investment is um, is is uh, given back. Right, and I want to. So that would be mm -hmm. good. Yes, and so that that would be my my word of conclusion. Uh, inviting uh, people to actually visit us or or talk to us and 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 check how solid our project is. Although it's not a real estate project again, but it's uh, I think a valid, very valid investment and very attractive investment for EB five investors. Sure. One thing we wanted to add and let the the audience know is that we have verified the uh, offering documents, the economic impact analysis, and the business plan. So we have uh, an extensive amount of uh, due diligence that can be uh, uh, that is available to any potential investors or their attorneys who would like to review that. That's free of charge. So uh, it has been, and I uh, just a bit of background on that. So. We hire independent third-party contractors. In the case of the securities document review and the background check, uh, that was done by CrowdCheck. Uh, their uh, profiles and bios are on the site. Uh, Sarah Hanks leads uh, CrowdCheck. She's a former attorney with the SEC, and they do an extensive uh, background review as well as a review of the offering documents to make sure that they're in compliance with securities guidance and securities laws. Uh, following that, we have done an economic impact assessment of not only the job creation, but also the targeted employment uh, letter. So that has been done by Impact Data Source out of Austin, Texas. Many of you are probably familiar with them. Uh, they do the review of the inputs and outputs and job creation methodology to make sure that these are consistent with USCIS guidelines. And finally, we have Joe Whalen, uh, who does our business plan review to make sure, again, that this is within USCIS uh, guidance and specifications. Uh, Joe is a former adjudicator with USCIS and has an extensive amount of knowledge regarding the EB-5 uh, program and uh, the, uh, the, the issues that may come up may arise during an investor's I-526 application. So uh, those three checks are done, and they are available, as I mentioned, to investors and attorneys who may be interested in this project and may wish to have some due diligence done for them. Um, so we do have a lot of this information on the eb5projects.com portal. Uh, we can see there the investment amounts, uh, the amount of investors, the amount of um, jobs that are being uh, projected to be created, uh, the asset category, and some basic information. If you would like more information, if you would like the actual offering documents or the actual business plan and economic impact assessment, uh, you can uh, reach out to Francois directly. Uh, they're uh, more than willing to help uh, give this to you and answer any questions that you have. Uh, so with that, I'm going to bring Francois back online and just say thank you very much. And um, if he has any final notes to, I can hear the New York very busy in Brooklyn today with <laughs> some activity in yeah, the background. Yeah, we, we have fire trucks all the time. I'm sorry about this. No problem. Did you, any, any final words? How can investors or their attorneys contact you if they'd like more information? 
The, the, the best way to contact us is um, to go onto the website, fxc-industries.com, and uh, make a contact through there, or go into the uh, eb5projects.com portal. Um, FXC Industries has a full page there with my name and my email, and that's the easiest way to make contact with us. Okay, Francois, I'm going to thank you again very much. Here's the, the contact information is on the screen here. I'm going to thank everybody who joined in today. If you have any questions, please contact Francois or contact us uh, at eb5projects.com or support at eb5projects.com. And with that, I'd like to say thank you to everybody and I hope everybody has a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Francois. Madonna, Sabana, and Dibu, and 